spirit out of my system about these the, the wickedness of this world being passed off as being good things. People have no idea of the evil we're up against, and that kind of is apt for this video. Few people have asked me to speak about the Crom Cruach. The Crom Cruach was the last pagan god of Ireland when the Christians first arrived. He was universally worshipped around the country and in large areas of Scotland too. Now, this is also like Mithraism. This shows you that paganism is not exclusively polytheistic. And like many cultures around that time, there was a general move towards a kind of a monotheism like Mithra in Persia and similar to Odin and Wotan was becoming very central in Nordic and uh, Germanic cultures while the other gods kind of took a backseat. So it's very interesting. But the same thing has happened in Hinduism where you've had situations where Shiva who was considered, might have been more venerated and more seen as a super god than he, he, he normally was and so on during different periods. Gods kind of came in and out of fashion and a lot of it had to do with things like the, the nature of the society and everything from its health and its economic well-being and so on. Now, so the Krom Krug, a lot of people know it from Krom appearing in, in, in the Conan the Barbarian stories in comic books and movies. Well, the story goes, and again from the Christian point of view, is that when the Christians arrived, they found the Irish worshipping a giant maggot called the Crom Cruet that had one eye. And this giant maggot with the one eye uh, cons was consuming uh, children as blood sacrifice, the usual story. And St. Patrick wiped out the Druids who were behind the Crom Cruet and brought peace and love to Ireland, except for the Irish Confederacy Wars where one third of the population murdered each, the other half because it, it, over which version of the most the most Jewish. But uh, so, but prior to that, the Crom Cruic was the primary god. Now, uh, the obviously the Crom Cruic story is much more complex than that. Now, the word Crom Cruic means a it basically from old Irish. Now it, it, it translates as a stalk of wheat or a a collection of wheat or a standing tall stalk of wheat so therefore it's a fer obviously a fertility god and it's the rituals venerating it were to bring it milk and i think milk and honey or milk and nuts so it was a classic pagan fertility god representing the harvest the stalk of wheat okay and therefore it was the veneration of milk and honey and milk and nuts was you know this is these is these are high protein foods that help that that are complemented by the carbohydrates in the stalks of barley wheat oat whatever they were growing so that's that's who the the, the crom cruic really was a fertility god now christians of course tell you that they murdered him they have to get rid of him because he was eating babies and he was a giant worm that was running the land and all this nonsense. So that's what it was. It was a classic Indo-European fertility god. Generally based on the harvest. The centre of his veneration was a, the plain of Maxlet, which is in County Cavan. There he had a large statue of himself surrounded by 12 idols of other gods. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Jesus and the 12 apostles. Well, as you see, I'm telling you, just like my, my documentary, Who Stole the Old Father, they're grabbing this stuff, the Christians were grabbing this stuff from anywhere they could find it. Now, the 12 apostles, the 12 idols that he was surrounded by has been some, attributed by some people to have been the zodiacal signs. Very interesting. Now, even though there isn't necessarily a star lore in pagan Ireland, which is not surprising, look at this guy, it's mostly grey all the time. But... Uh, Things like the Zodiac, Zodiac there, was a, there was tremendous uh, connections between Ireland and Roman Britain and Roman Europe. And the pagan Irish would have picked up things like perhaps the hor horoscopes and the Zodiac from incursions or encounters with Romans and Romans coming to Ireland. And so it's quite possible that Crom Cruach, 
that astrology and the zodiac could have become a big deal in Ireland at that time. And so you had the so you have this this but not, what we do know is that there was a he was a, sta- a statue of him was there in the plain plain of Machlep in County Cavan, surrounded by his twelve apostles. Now, Saint Patrick and his magical fire returns, uh, the same one that burned Tara to the ground, and him and his army burned the idols in Machlep. And this was obviously he had a gang with him and an army and mercenaries and so on. Think of St. Patrick as a Henry Kissinger type individual or a Klaus Schwab type individual. He was causing a great reset of our society. <clears throat> and so they, they, they killed the, the, the Magslet, they killed the Crom crew at God. Now, what's interesting is, and there's also some archaeological evidence, there's a, there's in Cavan, I think it's called Kill. Gigan or Kilgugan, there is a stone that definitely is venerating the Crom Cruick, the beautifully carved stone. There's a replica at a crossroads there. I don't know where the original is. I think it's in a museum somewhere. But <coughs> if you go to County Cavan, which is funny where my ancestry, my ancestry is from, the Sheridans, very common name in County Cavan, in the same townland as the Crowleys. Mm, so I'm probably related to the old the fucker himself. But uh, yeah, no, you know, so like the Crow, Alistair Crowley's family and my ancestors came from the same townland in uh, County Cavan, which is in the heart of Crom Crua country. So what that means, anything, I don't know. But um, it's terribly interesting. Now, as late as the 1500s, so we're talking about, you know, not a thousand, say, 1100 years after the uh, conversion of Ireland to Christianity, more, give or take, more or less, what we're told, there was, there was poetry talking about how people within County Cavan still venerated the Crom Croak. So they probably went up along with a fertility ritual or something like that, uh, and so on. But it, it, the God did endure after Christianity. It would have more petered away than been one great big you know, like all the others, it would have petered away. So that's the Crom Cruach. The Crom Cruach was the last pagan god of Ireland. Wiped his, his cult was destroyed by the Christians. Uh, St. Patrick, who didn't exist, was given the... Uh, St. Patrick, which is a cold word for a Klaus Schwab or a Henry Kissinger type individual, wiped his cult out, burned down his temples and his idols, and uh, after they burned down Tara... And they gave Ireland its first great reset, and uh, and that's basically that's basically the story. Uh, the maga thing is not true because that was a, a perversion of the the stalk, and they always give they always give them one eye, you know, this kind of thing, because they know that the apotheopatric magic protects you from evil. This is why Christians and there's a prohibition on apotheopatric magic. In the, in the biblical text, because this, doing this or doing this protects you from evil, and so the Crom Crew cult was probably based on this, a kind of an so basically, it was a fertility cult with a patriopathic elements. So, and then the Christians wiped it out. Now Odin also has his one eye closed as well. Remember that. So you remember that, like, so those of you, all the, when you have all these lunatics pu- pu- putting pictures of celebrities doing this and going, oh, Illuminati, and all this kind of thing, remember they're, uh, they're just ignorant of your Indo-European folk traditions and Indo-European uh, culture. That's all it's about. Just like they took Pan with his horns and made him into a devil. So there you go. Uh, There seems to be a growth in Christian fundamentalism at the moment. This is usually a sign of uh, an apocalyptic event in like a major war coming. There was huge, there was a mad dash towards Christianity and Catholicism in the run up towards uh, World War II. So all uh, suddenly I'm seeing everyone, uh, uh, there's mad mad holy rollers appearing everywhere. That's your own business, I don't care. But I mean, when there's an outbreak like this, and they've been all over my comments lately, all kind of like, you know, Second Temple rabbinical Christians uh, pretending they're not Jewish and trying to convince themselves they're not Jewish. But anyway, that's their own business. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, you wiped out our gods. Don't be, don't be picking on us. You wiped, you came here and wiped out our gods. 
and our goddesses and our and our native indigenous spirituality and then you have the balls of throwing around and say don't take my jewish god from two thousand miles away from me you know anyway take care i love you all sanguine gnosis sorry about losing my temper earlier on but i dislike people who prey on the suffering of others which is what those pretend ukrainian refugees are doing and you can call me all the names in the world you want for that now what they're doing is absolutely disgraceful it's the great reset too